I'm going to start with a disclaimer then. If you're not interested in the engine and you couldn't care less about mechanical things, this video probably ain't for you, so scroll on by. <laughs> if you are though, stick around. I don't know, you might learn something or you might be able to teach me something I didn't know, so yeah, carry on watching. Um, we had a bit of a problem with the engine. Now on the face of it, it doesn't sound too major. It was just an oil leak, but the fact the oil was leaking from between the head and the block means it could turn into something more major. So yeah, that's why we had to fix it before we could move the other day. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll show you what's what, shall I? So, when I checked the dipstick the other day before we moved, I noticed that the level had dropped slightly. Now, you always use a little bit of oil in old diesel engines, um, but yeah, it was a little bit more than we had been using. It was it was noticeable. Like the oil that we use, you don't really really notice because it burns a bit of oil as it runs anyway uh, but yeah we've been losing a bit more than what we should have done so I had a look around the engine and this is what I found we've got a bit of an oil leak um, and I've traced it back to up between I don't know if you can see in there there we go between the cylinder head and the block <coughs> So as you know, I already done the cylinder head. Well, I say as you know, if you've, if you've watched that video, um, I already replaced the cylinder head because we overheated. Um, and I didn't actually do the rebuild video. I never got round to it, and I think I've lost some of the footage now. But if I would have put that out, you would have seen that I didn't do the head bolts down to the full torque. I was advised not to by the guy who still makes these engines. He says do them up to, to almost full torque, um, but leave sort of 10, 15 newton meters off just in case you get any problems further down the line you know you can always crank it up that little bit more well I'm glad I did that now because we've got that oil leak so I'm hoping I can just crank these head bolts so there's four of them uh, on each on each cylinder head and then the other two are under this this rock of cover here um, I'm hoping I can just crank those up a little bit and that should stop the leak if not this head will have to come off again and then it will mean a new a new gasket again um, I don't know to be honest I'm not that bothered um, about taking that head off because as you can see it's not been painted green anyway because when I put it on we just needed it on so we could get moving um, so it was going to have to come off at some point to paint it um, I say I'm not bothered, I'm hoping I can fix it with just the head bolts because we need to get back to the car for Sunday because Emma's got to go and pick Trudy up from the airport so we can get rid of that other little furry gremlin on the boat. So let's show you what we do to torque these head bolts up and hope it fixes it. In order to get to these head bolts, I always have to take this rock cover off, I've already done that the other day. Uh, need to take that one off, uh, it's only one, one bolt so that's not too bad. But I need to take the water inlet manifold and the air inlet manifold off. Uh, before I do that, I shall isolate any water that's in the header tank, so that will stop that coming in. And then we've got a drain off here for the water. It did have a tap on the end, but that snapped off. Um, so I can turn it with the mole grips, and it will drain out this tap here. And that should get it all empty. And then I can take the water inlet manifold off without making too much of a mess. Um, all the gaskets were renewed when I when I put the uh, the new heads on anyway, so all these manifold gaskets are all sound, so I don't have to worry about anything like that. I've literally just got to remove them and retorque the bolts, and hopefully, job done.
There we have it then folks, our four head bolts. Well they're actually nuts on uh, on studs but you know what I mean. So we're going to tighten them up and we're going to do them diagonally. Because if we, if we tighten both these two it, it's got a chance of pulling the head over to the side. So always tighten your nuts, um, you know, gradually like incremental sort of thing, don't just go straight to the full torque and do opposing diagonals. Why has it happened and am I bothered? Um, no, I'm not bothered. Um, so since we've done the cylinder head gasket, um, this weekend has probably seen the most use out of the engine just because there's nowhere to moor in London. So it probably had a good 12 hours of running, um, so it's probably the hottest it's ever, it's ever ran. Um, when I say it's the hottest it's ever ran, it, it never got above, uh, I think it was 65, never got above 65, and it normally sits about 60, um, so it didn't get, didn't get too hot, um, but obviously when stuff gets hot, stuff expands, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the head's just expanded slightly, it's opened the gap up, so if I retorque these now to the correct torque, um, yeah, I think, I think we should be okay. Sod's law, isn't it, that it happens when we sort of two days cruise away from the car? Because it's probably about the only job on the engine I can't do without my trusty four spanner toolkit. But hey ho, what are you going to do? So, this is what I had to pop down screw fix for the other day. Uh, I've got a spanner this size that fits the, the nuts on the head studs. Um, but yeah, you can't get any torque on it you can't measure how tight you're doing it so I didn't want to just whack the spanner on and uh, and, and knacker it up sort of thing also it's difficult to even get the spanner on because of the angle that they're at anyway let's get this on the torque wrench see what happens so the manual says to do them to 120 foot pounds of torque and I have a feeling I only done them to 110 um, just in case anything did happen further down the line, you know you've got that extra little bit you can tighten them up. Whereas if you go straight for the 120 and you've got any problems further down the line, well, you're stuffed, you can't really do anything. If I'd have actually have pulled my finger out and done the engine rebuild video, you'd have also seen that my old faithful torque wrench shit itself. <laughs> so I had to go and get a new one. So here's my fancy new one. We'll get this set to 110. So you can see the the slider moves as I increase it. There we are, one ten. Let's give it a whirl. See what happens. Oh, that one's one ten. So is that one. So is that one. So they haven't come loose. Um, I don't know. Not too fussed. Let's crack it up to 120. And hopefully they get a bit of a turn so they tighten down some more. I didn't go straight for the 120, uh, I'd done a pass first at 115 newton meters and then I went for the 120. Uh, yeah, and each time I'd done it, I went round in the opposing diagonals to try and pull the head down as square as possible. Well, they all managed to have a bit of a turn, hoping it's enough to stop the oil leak. Only one way to find out. If you've ever used a Haynes manual, you'll know that reassembly is just the opposite of disassembly. Rocker covers on, air intake manifold on, then we can do the water intake manifold, get them bolts done up. Turn the water back on, make sure we fill back up the header tank with everything that I drained earlier, so we know we've got plenty of fluid in there. Then we can give it a whirl and see what happens. Well, she runs. Let's leave her ticking out of the half hour, let her get up to temperature. And come back and check the oil situation, see if we've still got any dribbles. Well, she's been ticking over for about 20 minutes, half hour now. Um, that is as hot as she's going to get without any load on her, so, uh, you know, without us moving the prop sort of thing. Um, can't see. 
any dribbles where they were coming from that's all dry down there now so hopefully that's cracked it only time will tell um, I would say we'll move it to test it now but just started bloody raining well that's that sorted then folks uh, we've moved since as well and there's been no more dribbles so that extra bit of talk done the done the trick um i don't know if i would have talked it up to 120 foot pound right from the start maybe we wouldn't have had this problem but you know there's still a chance that it could have leaked and if i had already talked it up to 120 foot pound well there's there's nowhere else to go so i'm i'm still glad i didn't do it up to the full talk as recommended and now we are safe in the knowledge we have got no oil leaks happy days if it's your first time here and you've enjoyed the video feel free to check out all our other vlogs um, if you're not new here, then you know what's coming next, don't you? I've got to leave you with a joke at the end of the video. Of course I have. I said to Emma the other day, I says, do you know anyone who can drink two gallons of diesel? She says, nobody can drink two gallons of diesel. I said, Jerry can. Wee. On that note, see you next week, folks. Goodbye.